This is CRI News. I'm Paul James. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi welcoming and expressing his support for the meeting between U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in Singapore. Wang Yi making the comments while meeting with ASEAN Secretary General Lim Jok Hoi in Beijing. He says the Singapore meeting marking a new stage in history after half a century of tensions between the United States and North Korea. We hope that top leaders of the two countries would establish mutual trust, overcome difficulties and reach basic consensus on promoting and achieving the denuclearization of the peninsula and enhancing and building a peace mechanism on the peninsula. We hope that they can make an important step in this direction. Of course, we are willing to see all the relevant parties making positive efforts in this regard. Chinese Foreign Minister also saying China will continue to do its part in helping denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. As part of the historical summit, Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un signing a new document promising to move toward peace on the Korean Peninsula. This includes a pledge by Kim Jong-un to achieve complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. The agreement also includes the repatriation of the remains of U.S. military personnel killed during the Korean War. However, details as to how these goals will be achieved are not said to be included in the documents. U.S. Treasury announcing new sanctions on Russian entities and individuals, accusing them of conducting malicious cyber-enabled activities. Sanctions against five Russian entities and three individuals. Certain Libya-related sanctions also imposed on six other individuals. Sanctions will freeze any of their assets in the U.S. and prohibit U.S. citizens from conducting business with them. Follows a previous ban on 38 Russian individuals and entities back in April, also imposed by the U.S. Treasury. Earlier this month, Russian President Vladimir Putin signing into law a bill which allows him to respond to the U.S. sanctions and other unfriendly states. The new law can prohibit foreign entities to provide services for the Russian government, conduct trade with Russian counterparts, or participate in the privatization of Russian property. New World Trade Center skyscraper in New York City opening for business after years of delays and a lack of funding. The 80-story office building known as Three World Trade Center standing at a height of 330 meters. It now stands as the fifth tallest building in New York City. Tower becomes the second to last building to open on the 16-acre site where around 2,700 people were killed when hijacked airplanes crashed into the World Trade Center Twin Towers on September 11th, 2001. Chinese officials saying 956,000 tons of foreign garbage being seized, trying to enter China through the first five months of this year. Garbage is among some 250 cases of illegal trash import. Customs officials also say that they've seized some 280 kilograms of smuggled ivory products and nearly 1,800 kilograms of drugs between January and May. Argentine President Mauricio Macri saying that his government's 50 billion U.S. dollar loan agreement with the International Monetary Fund offers the country predictability. Macri making the comments during a tour of a pasta manufacturing plant some 40 kilometers north of the capital, Buenos Aires. Macri says the 36-month loan will serve as a foundation to continue on with what he calls creating a culture of personal growth. Financing will be made available as of June the 20th when the agreement between the two sides takes effect. The United States has extradited former president of Panama, Ricardo Martinelli, to face criminal charges in Panama. Martinelli, arrested in Miami, Florida a year ago based on an extradition request from the Panamanian government, 66-year-old was Panama's president from 2009 to 2014. He's been accused of embezzlement and illegally monitoring phone calls and other communications. He's claimed that he is the target of political persecution. Car bombing thought to be an attack by Taliban militants in eastern Afghanistan, leaving five police officers dead and 26 others wounded. Suicide bomber ramming an explosive-laden hijacked military vehicle into the front gate of a government building in the embattled province of Ghazni. Most of the injuries include shrapnel and glass wounds. Three of the victims are said to be in critical condition. Government building also said to be severely damaged by the blast. China officially launching a demonstration zone in the province of Zhejiang to boost economic and trade ties with 16 Central and Eastern European countries. The announcement being made at a meeting of the China and CEEC economic and trade ministers in Ningbo. It's the first demonstration zone in China featuring relations with the CEEC. And that's the latest from CRI News. I'm Paul James.